Please reference Step 8, Install Pressure Pads. Now you're ready to move on to the bottom rail installation. Before you begin the bottom rail installation, it is important to review the rails and other parts needed for this step. The side rails are stamped with an S, and these are placed along the straight sides of the pool. The circular end rails are stamped with the pool width, such as 18 feet, and these will be placed along the circular ends of the pool. Make sure to separate these rails before you begin installation. Some pools will have transition rails to transition from the circular ends to the straight sides. If the soil in your area is relatively soft, your local codes may require you to use 12 by 12 by 2 inch patio blocks under each of the vertical end caps. If you are going to use patio blocks, they must be level with the pool floor. Please reference Install Bottom Rails. The tools needed for the bottom rail installation include a cordless drill, laser level, measuring rod, and a square shovel. The bottom rail installation starts at the side verticals. Attach the bottom rail locator to the side vertical with two 10 by 1 half inch long sheet metal screws. While you are attaching the locators, be sure you install the bottom rails stamped with S. They fit tightly between the side verticals and must be installed at this time. Be sure the bottom rail locator is mounted with the hook ends up and fastened to the side verticals using the top set of holes at the bottom of the side vertical. Please reference Install Bottom Locator and Install Bottom Rails. Continue the bottom rail installation by starting at the side vertical supports. Place the first circular end of a transition bottom rail into the bottom rail locator and the opposite end in the vertical end cap. Push the bottom rail to the stop of the plate. Install the next bottom rail into the plate in the same manner. Continue this process until you have installed all of the bottom rails. Once all of the bottom rails are in place, check the layout dimensions. At this point, you may need to adjust some of the plates and bottom rails. You may want to stake spots to hold the bottom rails in place. Now that the lower structure is set, you need to secure the concrete blocks that were installed earlier. Apply a quick drying concrete around and in these concrete blocks. This application will serve to support the oval structure. Now it is time to start the wall assembly. For the wall assembly, you will need duct tape and WD-40. Determine the wall starting point from the preliminary planning section in the assembly guide. Keep in mind that the wall starting point will determine where the wall ends and thus the placement of the skimmer and the filter. Also keep in mind that the wall has a top and bottom. There is an arrow label on the wall that indicates the top. Remember that the wall is a coil of metal. Consider using a leather type glove when handling the wall. Also remember, installing the wall is a team effort and it works best if only 6 to 10 feet are unrolled at a time. When starting the wall, align the starting edge of the wall on the center of the vertical end cap where the starting point has been determined. As you start to uncoil the wall, remember to keep your hands and feet from between the wall and the bottom rail. As the wall is uncoiled, secure the wall from one vertical end cap to another by inserting the bottom edge of the wall into the groove of the bottom rail. As you work your way from section to section, secure the wall by placing stabilizer rails on the top edge of the pool wall. Use duct tape to secure the stabilizer rails. Alternate the larger and smaller diameter rails by telescoping the small diameter rail into the large diameter rail about 6 inches. Note that the stabilizer rails only telescope on the ends of the pool. Use the large diameter stabilizer rails between the side supports. Please reference Install Wall. When the wall ends meet, make sure the joint will be at the center of the vertical end cap. If the wall joint either overlaps or is short, you can adjust the circular end bottom rails in or out until the wall ends meet properly. Be sure to adjust all bottom rails equally or you will not have an equal distance between each top rail. If you have a pool with two walls, you will secure the wall splice by using a joint connector. To make securing of the wall joint easier, remove the stabilizer rails from around the joint and pull the wall back so you have enough flexibility to align the ends correctly. Secure the wall ends of a slide joint configuration together by using a little WD-40 or dishwashing soap on the wall ends and the slip joint connector. This will allow the tight connection to slide easier. If sliding the connector is still difficult, tap slightly with a piece of 2x4. Do not use a hammer. This will damage the connector and the wall, weakening the joint. Please reference Install Wall Joint. To complete the wall assembly, insert the wall back into the bottom rail and install the remaining stabilizer rails. 
Up next, we'll cover installing the verticals. This step covers installing the end vertical supports. For this step, you will need a cordless drill. There are different configurations of the end verticals. Some verticals are a three-piece unit that must be assembled. Others are one-piece verticals that are ready to install. The three-piece assembly consists of two sides and one center strip. In order to assemble, slide the center strip's end beads into the matching opening on the side pieces. Please reference Figure B, Install Verticals. Now attach the end vertical supports to the bottom end caps by using 10 by 3 8 inch long sheet metal screws. The pool you are assembling will determine the amount of screws you will use. Please refer to the assembly guide to locate this information about your pool. Assembly guide reference, Install Verticals, Figures B, C, D, E, F, G. It is now time to add the vertical end caps to the verticals using 10 by 3 8 inch long sheet metal screws. The side vertical end caps are not the same as the circular end top vertical end caps, but they are attached in the same manner. A helpful hint at this point is to review the assembly guide to double check which set of holes you will use for installing the top rails. To assist you, use a marker to mark which sets of holes to use. Refer to assembly guide, install top rails. Clarify which top rails go on the sides of the pool. This portion of the installation also requires a cordless drill. Secure each top rail to the holes you previously marked in black by matching them with the hole labels on the top rail. Assemble using two 10 by 1 half inch sheet metal screws on each end of the top rail. It's time to attach the top connectors. Some top connectors are one piece that snap on, while others are two piece connectors that are screwed in place. This pool has two pieces top connectors and is screwed in place. The bottom portion is screwed to the verticals with a 10 by 3 8 inch sheet metal screw. Then hook the back portion of the top connector on the inside of the top rails and pull it towards the outside of the pool. By pulling up on the bottom connector and pulling forward and down on the top connector, the holes in the top and bottom should align. The small holes will appear behind the large holes. Then fasten together with two 10 by 3 8 inch long sheet metal screws. Finally, snap the plastic trim piece into the two large holes. It is required to place coving around the bottom inside of the pool wall. We are using a pre-manufactured cove purchased at your dealer, however you may choose to form a cove out of sifted earth. Cove installation varies depending on the manufacturer. After the cove is installed, start to form the floor of the pool with sand.